Hey guys, coming at you with another video on this Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. And today I wanted to share with you. So I have done a lot of videos on head pressure. I've also done quite a bit on acid reflux. And that was one of the, after head pressure, this has been one of the main symptoms that I've dealt with. And I've gone through a lot of things of reflux, of, of trying different things. Um, and in trying to find some answers and working on some things. Um, and I've, I've dealt with it on and off. It's like I, I've dealt with it, but when you don't have symptoms anymore. You don't really, you don't really focus on it too much. And so this comes and goes frequently. And right now it's, it's definitely coming um, where it's kind of peaking, where I dealt with acid reflux in a couple of ways. I've never taken PPIs, which thank God I haven't, because I think they make the problem worse. For context, PPIs inhibit your body to make stomach acid so it doesn't splash up. Your body produces stomach acid to break down the foods. If it doesn't break down properly, they can rot and ferment, creating gas that will push the stomach residue up your esophagus and burn your throat. Now, I don't get heartburn, so I've kind of termed this almost incorrectly for what I actually probably have. And I probably have LPR and some form of GERD and probably some form of SIBO. And that's what I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. Because through all these years of having all these symptoms and pains and, and all this, the one thing that I have noticed frequently is that I have had, well, that was really funny. Sorry, that guy on the crosswalk was freaking out. Um, I have had unbelievable issues with throat pain. That's, that's the main symptom. And I have terrible gas, this awful gas. Like, it's bad. I don't necessarily get constipated, although that can occur sometimes, but the main thing that I have found is that I have very poor gut motility, which makes sense because I can see contents in my stool. I can see um, that, you know, well, I can tell that I have terrible gas and I have acid reflux. So I don't really, well, the acid part, part of reflux. So. LPR is silent reflux. It's laryngeo something, something, something. I don't even want to try to pronounce it. Um, where it, 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 it's more so the, the throat and more so the, oh, I also get a chronic cough, which is very annoying. Um, and I have mucus issues too, where like the mucus will overwhelm um, because it's a protection mechanism. When the acid splashes up, I produce a ton of mucus. Some of the things that have probably caused this over time. One is stress because stress slows everything down. Two, I eat so late at night and I just, I get bad with it. Like the last, I was just talking with my girlfriend. The last three nights before this, this previous one, I've eaten at eight o'clock. I've eaten at nine, 10 and I ate at like 8.30, nine o'clock. And then I go to bed within an hour, if not sooner. It's like, that's just not plausible. Like you're gonna lay down and you're going to have the content splash up. And so that's been really, really frustrating. On top of the fact that, you know, the stress is making everything slower. So the process is gonna take longer. And so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try a couple things that I've found. So uh, after all this research and all this these testings, by the way, recently I had tests for uh, with a chest x-ray, nothing unusual, thinking maybe it was bronchitis with the dry cough, because I haven't had a dry cough that much. Um, I got a white blood cell count um, and, and red blood cell. My white blood cell count is just slightly below normal but it's been like that for the past year. So it's like uh, the doctor doesn't take anything of it. And I don't think I really need to take any more tests. I don't feel like out of sorts. Um, and then lipase, which was interesting because that was low. 
and that is an enzyme produced by the pancreas to break down fat. So maybe I'm just not not great at breaking down fats. I'd be worried if that was like zero, but yeah, I don't think I've had, uh, I have any sort of issues there. And then on top of it, I got some food intolerance tests that I'm waiting for my results back. So through all that, I'm trying, I'm going to an osteoporosis, osteo, something that manually manipulates because I've had a lot of pressure on my left side and I think honestly it's the digestive system just really struggling to break things down. So I'm on the search to find the core cause. I haven't been tested for SIBO and I want to get tested for SIBO. That would be step one. Step two, regardless of it, is I know that I have some sort of reflux and it's causing unfortunate damage over time and I need to make sure that I cause this root issue. So. How do we get motility up and things moving? Well, heard a lot of things about B1, so I'm starting to take nutritional yeast, which is a Dr. Berg supplement. I'm starting to take um, ginger and artichoke extract. I watched this really good video on YouTube about this guy who just talked about how he had SIBO, IBS, which SIBO, IBS is just a terrible term. He had POTS too, which is not fun. POTS is awful. Um, he had some acidity issues. So pretty similar to me. So I've been starting to take that. The other thing that I have looked into that I've found that's, that's fairly recent is alginase, which are essentially, um, what they do is they are a form of seaweed that when in the contact of stomach acid um, or vinegar, the contents kind of foam up in a ball and it creates a raft formation. So you take this after you eat and it goes down in the stomach and it forms a, um, a raft on the top of the stomach. And so when the contents splash up, it hits the raft instead of splashing up into your esophagus. So that's, that's huge. Um, it, it, I've heard a lot of people that alleviates it because you know a lot of a lot of doctors they just keep saying PPIs. If I want to get an upper GI, I got to take six weeks of PPI. It's such a joke, man. Like, give me a break. And he does bring up a point. Well, it's like, what if you have a stomach ulcer and it solves the problem with the ulcer? And it's like, I just, I don't buy it. You know, I think there's many different ways to deal with it. So. To recap some of the steps that I've been doing to deal with it. So I'm going to start intermittent fasting. Trying to eat at least three hours before bed and not drink water two hours before bed. That's a start. Something that I've been really struggling with. I'm going to continue to take my B1 and my um, ginger extract and artichoke to speed up motility. And then I'm going to, I'm not going to take too much of that. I have a reflux gourmet is what I bought. I'm, I'm going to see if I can solve the issue with speeding up motility. Um, and then um, I'm going to do a little bit more exercise, stress reduction. And so those, those are kind of my plans. I don't know if some people have had similar symptoms, if they want to comment. That'd be great because I'm just kind of at, I've been dealing with this on and off. I just don't make videos on it because it just goes away after, you know, a month or so. But then it flares up and I'm like, man, I want to beat this permanently. This sucks. So, um, hope you guys enjoy. Let me know what you think and, uh, hope you're doing well.